Like I said, it didn't feel like a huge transition. It felt kind of natural. And, yeah. and, and it, was, it was pretty easy interacting with the baby and, and, and being a parent with Brian. It was, it was really fun. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, that's really, it was really cool and very sweet to watch. I feel the same way. I think it's just progressive, you know. I think it's just paralleling what's going on in our real lives and, and what's happening. And I think just kind of mindsets and, you know, our perspective. And, you know, it's a different time right now, you know. My daughter's not exactly little anymore. And, you know, I think all the time about having more kids. And that's, that's, that's where I'm at. So, you know, I'm comfortable in that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that, that's something that's been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. I remember when Vin, uh, we were working on the fourth one. Yeah. We were working on the fourth one. And uh, he, uh, his baby was going to be born. And he was contemplating going into the hospital to watch labor. He wasn't sure if he wanted to see it or not because he was afraid it might freak him out to see all of that. And uh, he ended up going. But I mean, that was the first time like I really felt like I saw Vin, mm -hmm. like the human side of him, you know? Because he's always got the game face on. He's so intense and he's always thinking. He's always in the Dominic Toretto. And it's like, sometimes it used to be for me anyways, it was really hard to differentiate between Dominic and Vin. Um, and then after that, it just seemed like things opened up. But I feel that, uh, you know, I see that with all these guys. Some are willing to reveal a little more than others. Um, but, uh, you know, you got to earn it. And with the time that we put in together, you earn more and more every time. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. No, in the fifth one I got to do a lot, which which was really fun. It was just breaking the seal that was the issue, and I and I did it with Paul, and he helped me through it, and, and that was one of the most fun scenes to shoot, um, where we jump off in the in the favelas. It was fun. Um, so this time, the only thing that was tough was running into Kim Cold, who's massive. So I didn't expect that that would be that would you know hurt, but it did. But it's still, again, it's just fun. It's, there's so many variables that, that tie in, and I think it's funny because it's not uncommon or in conversation we'll think of another reason why <laughs> it might be, you know, another reason why things may be the way that they are, mm -hmm. things that have worked in our favor. But um, I think in the immediate, um, I think that what Rob constructed really, Rob Cohen, the director on the first one, you know, we've had players that have come along, and it's like more recently Justin obviously has been... He's done a lot for us, but I think Rob Cohen really got us out on the right foot early on. And his objective was really to emulate what we saw taking place in Southern California with street racing. And the place is real, it's multicultural, right? Which is huge, it's a huge component, the reason why this thing was successful. If it was set in middle America, the first one, I don't think it would have had the reach that it did. But uh, that we filmed in Southern California where we got a strong kind of Latin flair and essence and energy and we got all the Asian crews and we got all the white dudes running out. He wanted to capture that and uh, it resonated with a lot of people because it doesn't matter where you go in the world that was going on. It may be a different style or type of racing. Um, they, they, the language may be different, but uh, it's the same essence, you know, and um, we, we we were lucky. We captured that in a bottle early on. And since then, really what it's been about is augmenting it and making it better and uh, showcasing it in a different way.